Hello again. This is going to be our last session in which we focus on problem solving and we're going to find a thorough solution of all the applications that we have mentioned during these lessons. As a start, before we indulge in the exercises and applications, let us just summarize all our rules in one paper. First, we talked about work of a force and we said that we are supposed to know the work of a force when the force is parallel to displacement. So it's either plus or minus F times the displacement. We just add here that F is parallel to displacement. Okay. Second, we went into particular forces. Work of the normal is zero. Work of friction is minus friction times the distance. Then work of weight is plus or minus MGH. Or you can simply say work of weight. I like this equation much more mg height initial minus height final so i will use this equation in my solution third we know that kinetic energy is half mv squared and i'm gonna add units this should be in meters per second while this should be in kilograms kinetic energy is always in joules four we have the gravitational potential energy which is mass times the gravity times height. Height should be in meters. Five, mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic and gravitational potential. As for the total energy, this is an optional idea. Six, friction is neglected equals to zero. Between brackets, it's neglected. Then, and traction as well. Let's just mention this always then mechanical energy is conserved now when you want to express the conservation of mechanical energy you simply say mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final and choose the initial and final wisely seven if mechanical energy is not conserved it is either lost or gained mechanical energy is lost in case of resistive forces okay or resistive work as we mentioned at the beginning and if and mechanical energy increases in case of motive forces such as the traction that's it so the conversion or the mechanical energy change or variation is converted into work or produced by the work of these forces either resistive or motive. this summarizes all the rules that we're going to use let's start with application one in application one we have a winch pulling a block of given mass along an inclined plane the block moves from a to b low to high as shown in the figure with a b being 50 centimeters height of b is also given 15 centimeters while in motion the friction is constant and its value is 6 newtons the tension in the string has a magnitude of 20 newtons and g is given to be 10. in fact you will always be given g as 10. if it is not given in a certain exercise we simply use it as 10. determine the work done by each force acting on the block along this path to answer this question first step i'm gonna draw a figure a rough figure okay to list all the forces so motion is upward okay i'll draw the box here forces acting switching color are weight okay i try to draw them as accurate as possible we have tension because the winch is pulling or the string is pulling we have the normal reaction and we are also given that friction exists now after listing these forces i know what to calculate we start work of the normal is directly zero because the normal is perpendicular to motion second the second force is friction in fact there is no second and third however i just arrange them by order of simplicity the normal is the easiest to calculate i mentioned it at the beginning work of friction as we know is minus f times the distance which is a b equals minus six times a b is given to be 50 centimeters so i write the conversion here with different color 
AB equals 50 centimeter, which is 0 0.5 meter. By the way, at this level of studying in grade 12, we shouldn't have these as mistakes. So pay attention because you might just skip that idea equals to minus 3 joule. Anytime we get a negative answer, we just write a sentence after that. Work of friction is resistive. That's why it's negative. Third, work of tension from A to B. This equals, this is not an equation that we know, but since we know that displacement A to B is upward and tension is pulling upward, so it's plus T times AB, okay? T is along AB so that you know what to do. So equals plus 20 times 0 0.5, which is plus 10 joule. Okay, it's positive. No need to mention anything about positive, but if you want, you can add the term. Let me add this with red. Motive. Okay, in red meaning that you are not supposed to write that. Third is the work of weight, or in fact, fourth. Usually, I leave the work of weight till the end because it involves one further step. As I know, it is MA, MG, height A minus height B. Always take this as height initial and height final, as I told you. Equals, mass is given to be uh, 1.2, multiplied by G, which is 10, multiplied by height A is 0, height B is given to be 0 0.15 meters. So this is none but minus 1.8 joule. Again, we add resistive. That's it. So in order to calculate or solve problems involving work, first step, identify the system you're studying, list the forces acting on it. Second, specify the motion from which point to which point uh, is happening. After that, go and rush to use the equations that you already know. That's all concerning application one. Moving now to application two. Application two is about kinetic inertia. We have a car of mass 1,200 kilograms moving with a speed of 54 kilometers per hour. Now, first, we need to determine the kinetic inertia. Second, there is some weird question. Let's talk about it. At speed V, the car and after braking the car crosses a certain distance d before stopping it is assumed it is given that the distance is proportional to kinetic energy based on the given above how does the distance d the stopping distance vary if the speed is doubled so discussing two before we move on because we won't have this picture in front of us I can tell that since the distance is proportional to the kinetic energy, and they are asking us about doubling the speed effect. Now I think about linking kinetic energy to speed, which is half mv squared. If v is doubled, then kinetic energy, which has v squared, is quadrupled. So that's how I'm going to think about this. Hold on to this idea, and when we start solving, I'll remind you about it. Starting with the first part, which is a direct application. So part one, we know that kinetic, kinetic energy is half mv squared, with, where mass is given to be 1,200. Now, however, v is given to be 54 kilometers per hour. So I divide by 3.6, if you remember the rate that we talked about, then v is 15 meters per second, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. so. Kinetic energy is half. The car's mass, as I remember, is 1,200. Speed is 15 and squared. Guys, you cannot imagine how many mistakes I notice with people forgetting the square. Keep that in mind. So kinetic energy equals half 600, uh, 1,200 is 600, times 225 is 1350 and two zeros. So 135,000 joules. That's it. Second part, what happens to D, which is the braking distance? Braking distance. 
Ok. How does D vary? How does D vary if speed is doubled, is times 2? So that's the question in brief. So I will try to link these two together. D is given to be proportional to at to kinetic energy. And kinetic energy equals half mv squared. If v is doubled, what happens to ke? Then ke is quadrupled. Multiplied by 4 because v is squared. Hence, d is also quadrupled. Multiplied by four. Okay? Chew on this a bit. Think about it again. Given D proportional to kinetic energy, when speed is doubled, kinetic energy is quadrupled multiplied by four. Therefore, D should also be multiplied by four. So guys, next time you drive the car, pay attention. If you double your speed, the distance that you need to stop your car upon braking with the same brakes will be multiplied by four. So think wisely and drive wisely as well. Application three is a direct application about gravitational potential energy in which we need to calculate the potential energy of a ball in three different positions, A, B, and C. The reference level is also given here. We usually use the reference level to calculate the height in the equation of GPE. So starting with the general equation, GPE equals mass times gravity times height. We don't need to mention anything because the reference level is given. At A, instead of saying at A, I can simply say GPE at A equals mass, which doesn't change, times G, which doesn't change, times height at A, because it might be at A or B or C. Replacing, mass is 2, it's given in the given, it's given on the figure in fact, multiplied by 10, which is G, multiplied by the height of A is 0, so equals to 0. Or, you could have simply said GPE at A is 0 on reference. Okay? So, for simplicity, you can directly say that the point is on the reference. Second is GPE at point B. Again, I write the equation MG and add height at B, which equals 2 times 10 times height at B. If I look carefully, it's plus 2. So, GPE at B is plus 40 joules. No need to say plus 2 because we mentioned in the text that if the point is above the reference, we directly write GPE positive. If the point is below the reference, we directly write the GPE negative, keeping the height always as a positive value. Okay? GPE at point C is minus MGHC, taking HC as a value, which is minus 2 times 10 times 1, so GPE at C equals minus 20 joules. Now that's it. However, before we move on, I will just add a comment here. Or we could have written GPE at point C equals MGHC, notice I didn't add the minus, equals 2 times 10 times height of C is minus 1, which is minus 20 joules. This is also accepted. Definitely accepted. However, since we discussed this in the course, in uh, session two, I think, okay, we mentioned that we use height positive, but we add the plus or minus to the equation. If you want to abide by that, do it, and you can see the solution in blue. And if you just want to use height being positive or negative, feel free to do it. That's it concerning application three. Now we move to application four. This application is more likely to be like a question and a problem. So when you encounter problem solving, expect something like that. A person descends using a parachute from a hovering helicopter stationary at point A of altitude HA being 200 meters. The system person parachute has a mass of 80 kilograms. The jump has two phases. The first phase is from A to B, as you can see on the figure, in which the parachute is closed and the person is not subjected to any frictional force. 
calculate the mechanical energy of the system at A, then mechanical energy is conserved between A and B and Y. That's simple since we have no friction. C, S arrives at B with a velocity or speed of 40 meters per second. Show that, show that the altitude of B with respect to the ground is 120 meters. In order to solve such a situation, the first thing you can start with and the easiest thing is to draw a figure. So let's just draw a rough figure here, okay? Showing a ground, G and D, or you can simply write GPE0 since it's the reference. GPE0 is like an abbreviation of uh, the reference. Point C is irrelevant now. We have points B and A as given. Now the figure shouldn't be to scale. Height at A is given, 200 meters. Height at B is not given, if I remember well, it's a question that we need to find later. However, V at B is given to be 40. At A, we have something stationary, a stationary helicopter or something like that. So part one, let's calculate the mechanical energy at point A. Mechanical energy at A, is equal to gravitational potential energy at A plus kinetic energy at A. But kinetic energy at A is zero because the helicopter or the man was stationary. Okay? Therefore, mechanical energy at A equals mgha only. Notice that anytime I write gravitational potential energy as an expression at a certain point. I include the point I'm dealing with in the height. So mass is 80 multiplied by G10, whether given or not. Height A is 200, simply A is above the reference. So the answer is 160,000 joules. Second part, mechanical energy is conserved. Why? We mentioned that since Frictional forces, frictional forces, whether you want to call them like that or simply say a resistance, it's correct, are neglected as given. Then what? Then mechanical energy is conserved, and that's more than enough. Part three, it might need some calculation. At B, the, the speed is given. It's given to be 40. Here it appears like 90, but it's 40 meters per second, show that height of B is 120 meters. In order to solve this, think about it. If I want to show that height is 120, and we are dealing with mechanical energy, that is what usually students think about. So we try to focus on equations that we have, and we know, and are related to the height. In fact, I think in the opposite way. Usually what I do is, I ask myself, what have I done right now? Right now, I've proved that mechanical energy is conserved, and that's very valuable, okay? So I'll start from there. Then, since I'm given that speed is 40, that would help me find kinetic energy. So looking at the wide view, mechanical energy is the sum of half mv squared and mgh. That's a good thing in which I can link all these ideas together and find h. So mechanical energy at b equals mg height at b plus half mv at b squared. Notice I skipped the point where I write gpe plus ke because I already mentioned it in part one. Now, but mechanical energy at b equals mechanical energy at a equals 160,000 because mechanical energy is conserved. Conserved. Right? Thus, now I can pass to numbers. 160,000, sorry, equals 80 multiplied by 10 multiplied by height at a B, which I do not know yet, plus half into 80 into 40 squared. And as we talked before, pay attention with kinetic energy, a very common mistake that we forget d squared. So 160,000 equals 800 h at b plus 
80 over 240, 40 cubed is 64,000. 800 H at B equals 160,000 minus 64,000. Here I'll pause a bit. Okay, usually what I've done here is I kept 800 HB on the right hand side and moved the 64,000 to the left hand side. But in execution, when I wrote, when I wrote the answer, I moved H, uh, 800 HB to the left hand side because we are used to solving equations from left to right. So 800 HB equals 96,000. Then HB equals 96,000 over 800. HB is 120 meters, and here it is proof. Now, a remark some people, some people might do the following you can calculate kinetic energy first. Okay, then gravitational potential energy is mechanical minus kinetic, then GPE equals MGH, and you calculate H. So definitely you can use this uh, procedure that I've uh, described in, uh, in red. Okay, what I've done in blue is correct. Some people might find it a bit confusing to use numbers like that. Some others are okay with it. Just feel free and choose whatever you prefer. Now, starting with phase two or part two of the question, the person opens his parachute now, where the force of air friction or air resistance on the open parachute slows its fall and the speed decreases from 40 meters per second to five meters per second. Now, regardless of the great change in the speed, regardless of that, we will solve the question. Part A, calculate the mechanical energy at points B and C. I think at B we have all information that we need. And at C we are also given the speed at C. Then calculate the variation. In what form does this variation appear? And last but not least, the least part is calculate the magnitude of the friction knowing that delta Me equals minus F times BC. Okay, let's go. Now, passing to phase two, as we always start, draw a figure, a descriptive figure, just showing the situation, okay? So over here, I have the ground, GP0. Point C is on the ground. Point B is above. I know VB is 40 meters per second. I know height B is 120 meters per second. And we also know the mechanical energy at P, which they are asking about. At C, we know that VC is 5 meters per second. First part, A, calculate the mechanical energies at B and C. Mechanical energy at B is equal to mechanical energy at A is equal to 160,000 Joule. No need to go over the calculation, but if you want, you can. You have V and you have H. Then, mechanical energy at C which is MGHC plus half MVC square. This is zero because it's on the reference. Thus, half into 80 into VC, which is given to be five squared. Mechanical energy at C is nothing but 40 times 25, 1000 joules. Notice the tremendous drop in the mechanical energy. And here comes the question. Calculate the mechanical energy lost from B to C. I forgot the C here. Okay? Now, you can directly calculate the lost energy as this minus that, or you can calculate the variation. I will choose the variation method, okay, because it's more general. And I will also write the method where you can directly calculate the loss. Delta mechanical energy. Whenever you use delta, that is mechanical energy final, C, minus mechanical energy initial, which is point B, equals 1,000 minus 160,000. Therefore, delta mechanical energy is minus 159,000 joules. 
We always comment on this negative value. Therefore, mechanical energy decreases by 159,000 joules. That's it. In red, you could have written the following. Or, mechanical energy lost. When you specify lost, no need to mention final minus initial. You just take the larger value, 160,000, minus 1,000, which is 159,000 joules. So this one is definitely accepted, especially that the question is calculate the lost energy. However, if the question were to calculate the variation, no, you have to mention the variation, then specify whether it's an increase or decrease. This is part B, by the way, not C. Excuse me for the mistake. Part C, if I'm not mistaken, is in what form does this energy appear? Lost energy is converted or is transformed, is transformed into heat. Okay? Into heat. Instead of heat, you can also say thermal energy. D, knowing that lost or delta Me equal minus F times Vc, we already calculated delta Me. And here, if you have calculated the last mechanical energy, you have to pay attention and write it here as negative. Or treat the negative that you get at the end. Minus 159,000 equals minus F times 120 meters. So F equals 159,000 over 120. Again, with the left and right thing. Minus and minus cancel out. So friction is going to be directly 1,325 newtons, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And that's it. Now, if you have, if you have used here Me lost equals minus F times ABC, you will get that 159 equals minus F. F is going to be minus 1325 newton it cannot be negative but in case you did you just explain what the negative sign is you just say that negative stands for friction being opposite or anything like that we don't leave it uh, uninterpreted okay that's it concerning this application application 4 is truly important it's a problem in general when you go to exams expect such exercises to be present that's it concerning the chapter. We have finished the uh, theoretical part, the course in which we have listed some ideas and some concepts as well. Then we solved some exercises and a problem at the end. Thank you for your time. I hope that you didn't find this chapter hard and see you in the upcoming chapter.